Welcome to another episode of Faith Explorations, the podcast where we delve deep into the teachings and principles of Christianity and embark on a transformative journey through the realms of faith and spirituality. I'm your host, Kenneth Garcia. In episode 30, entitled Embracing the Fear, Discovering God-Fearing Faith, is where we delve into a topic that often raises questions and sparks discussions. What does God-fearing mean? Do we really need to fear Him? The word fear can carry a negative connotation, so let's explore its meaning in the context of our relationship with God. But our exploration doesn't end here. For more insights that can enrich your journey of faith, be sure to visit us at BibleKeeper.com. So without further ado, let's dive in. When we hear phrases like fear, the Lord, or be God-fearing, it can be challenging for some people to reconcile the idea of a loving and fatherly God with the notion of being terrified. To the unbeliever, the fear of God may signify the fear of judgment and eternal separation from Him. But as Christians, what does it mean to fear God? The Bible is replete with examples of a person's fear of God being seen as a blessing rather than a curse. In Genesis chapter 42, verse 18, Joseph gained his brother's trust by claiming to be a man who fears God. The midwives spared Hebrew children because they feared God and chose to follow him rather than the government, as we see in Exodus chapter 1, verse 17. Fearing God entails submitting to him in absolute awe and adoration, acknowledging his power and authority over the universe. God is indeed the highest authority over the entire universe. As the Apostle James reminds us, we have no certainty about tomorrow and the brevity of our lives. We are like a mist that appears briefly before dissipating. This understanding helps us recognize the need to fear God and obey Him because of His holiness and His hatred of sin. When we fear God, we acknowledge His immense power, providence, and provision for us to be made holy and resemble Him more. It is a reminder that we are not to give in to our sinful nature. Rather, we are to walk in His ways, aligning ourselves with His will. Fearing God opens the door to knowledge and understanding, as mentioned in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, which states that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, some may wonder why we need to fear God if He is a loving and merciful God. Scripture and Christian tradition often refer to the fear of God to highlight the distinction between the Lord God and humankind. However, our fear of God should never cause us to treat others with less respect, kindness, or love. In fact, perfect love overcomes fear, as we are told in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Our fear of God should motivate us to act morally, to follow His commandments out of love and gratitude for His kindness and generosity. As we progress spiritually and deepen our love for God, we become more morally motivated, seeking to align our lives with His will. The Holy Spirit plays a vital role in guiding and convicting believers, helping us develop reverence, awe, and a desire to honor God in all aspects of our lives. In the book of Proverbs, we are reminded that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It leads to understanding and discernment. Godly fear is a recognition of His holiness, righteousness, and perfect judgment. Throughout history, we find numerous examples of God-fearing men and women who displayed profound reverence for God, living in alignment with His will and displaying genuine awe for His presence. So, how can we cultivate a God-fearing attitude in our lives? Let's explore a few ways to be God-fearing. Firstly, we must hate sin and not God. Fearing God means seeking solace in Him, finding shelter from the consequences of sin. It's important to understand that our fear should be directed toward the consequences of not being in a relationship with the Father rather than being afraid of punishment. Secondly, we need to respect God's Word. Developing a fear of the Lord requires having a high regard for the Bible. By studying Scripture, we learn more about God's character, His ways, and our role as His creation. As Christians, we are called to recognize the value of Scripture, study it, and apply its universal and non-optional truths in our lives. Thirdly, studying the scriptures for guidance is essential. Throughout the Bible, we find examples of individuals encountering God and displaying profound reverence for Him. Their experiences can provide valuable insights as we strive to fear God in the way we ought to. Fourthly, it is crucial to remember our basic human duty. We should learn from the mistakes of those who have gone before us. King Solomon, regarded as one of the greatest persons to have lived, made grave errors when he abandoned his fear of God. Despite the blessings God bestowed upon him, 
Solomon repeatedly broke God's law and eventually worshipped false gods. Let us heed Solomon's warnings about the purpose of life and the fear of the Lord. Lastly, we must worship God acceptably. Life often presents us with unexpected situations and challenges, but our fear of the Lord should lead us to seek and understand His intentions and requirements. We need to live in accordance with His will, waiting patiently with a devoted heart and worshiping Him who formed heaven and earth. The Bible consistently emphasizes the importance of fearing God. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, the Lord requires nothing but for His people to fear Him, walk in His ways, love Him, and serve Him with all their hearts and souls. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, we are encouraged to cleanse ourselves from all impurities, bringing cleanliness to completion in the fear of God. Fearing God is intertwined with holiness and living in obedience to His commandments. In conclusion, we fear God because He alone has control over the fate of our souls. However, the fear of God does not mean constantly worrying or being afraid. As Christians, we know that God does not condemn us because Jesus paid the price for our sins. Instead, we humble ourselves before God out of reverence for His holiness, His greatness, and His power. Fearing God paves the way to a closer relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It involves hating evil, aligning ourselves with God's power, and choosing to live an eternal life with Him. Let us strive to fear God, not as an anxious or terror-filled fear, but as a reverence that acknowledges His sovereignty and authority. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Faith Explorations. We hope this discussion has provided you with a deeper understanding of what it means to fear God and why it is an essential aspect of our faith. Remember, as Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. If you enjoyed today's discussion and want to explore more topics related to spirituality, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And visit us at BibleKeeper.com for more resources that will enrich your faith journey. Join us next time as we continue to explore matters of faith and spirituality. Until then, may God bless you abundantly.